contradictions in the colonial experience. Political and ideological structure of the Japanese government general. In this section of the lecture, we're going to examine specifically how Japan was able to impose imperial rule over Korea. Korea became a colony of Japan in blank and was liberated in blank. What are the numbers for the blanks? Now, as mentioned, the fundamental principle underlying imperialism is that the empire is the supreme power and the colonies exist to support the empire. So the empire will go into the colonies, extract whatever resources they want for its own benefit, and this is all done for the advantage of the empire and not vice versa, not the other way around. So it's important for us to keep this principle in mind as we examine the Japanese colonization of Korea. Because while the rhetoric of the Japanese colonial administration might have been that 
the Japanese came to Korea to help Korea modernize and to improve the circumstances. The, the, the real point of the matter was that the Japanese were there to extract as much resources as possible for their own benefit and for the empire. The political structure of the colonial administration in Korea was, was organized in such a way that it gave the ruler of, or the leader of the colonial administration all of the power. And uh, this was the governor general. So whereas in the Japanese mainland, there was a national parliament that would deliberate on legislation and that would get approval from the, from the emperor. The governor general, in contrast, in Korea, could bypass the national parliament, did not have to consult or get the approval of parliament, and reported directly to the Japanese emperor. This gave him much more power. And so because of this, he was able to behave like a virtual dictator. The colonial administration was also a vast and imposing structure. So whereas it began with approximately 10,000 bureaucrats at the beginning of the period, by 1937, there were 87,000 bureaucrats in the colonial administration. Now, if we compare this to the government from the previous dynasty, the Joseon dynasty, at any point during the Joseon dynasty, there were maybe at most 6,000 bureaucrats. So the Korean people were simply not used to this kind of pervasive and invasive governmental structure that went down to the very local level. This is then coupled and supported by a police force. By the late 1930s, there were about 60,000 members of the police force, and the police were incredibly powerful and very oppressive. So one of the first contradictions that we're going to examine is Japanese economic policy. So although uh, Japan wanted to develop Korea economically in order to support the Japanese imperial economy, and this meant also incorporating the Korean economy into the international market, there were some features of the Korean economy that the Japanese simply left alone and did not change because it wasn't to their benefit. And one example of this is the feudal landlord tenant system. So the feudal landlord tenant system where you have a landowner and a tenant farmer and strict class differences in, and as well as differences in wealth. This system existed throughout the Joseon dynasty and then was maintained throughout the colonial period. And it was just because for the Japanese to change it, it was not very convenient, and it also didn't really benefit the Japanese empire. Korea's role in the colonial administration was that they could, they could perform an advisory role, but they had no real power. And the police, because they were so powerful and pervasive, they were able to stamp out any kind of opposition to the colonial administration. These are the keywords for this class. Governor General, military police, landlord tenant, feudal.